Hi everybody, um, I hope this is working. If it's not coming through, if you can't hear me, um, please just pop up a message on the side. I think you can comment and I will move a bit closer or move the camera. Um, my name's Bryony, I am a Sling Consultant um, and I've been asked to do a little bit of a guide on an introduction to baby wearing, really. Um, so I will do a little bit of a, the benefits of baby wearing um, and tell you about the main types of carriers you can use. And then I will do some demonstrations of the most popular ones and then take any questions and anything you'd like me to talk about or anything you'd like me to show you, please just comment and I'll try and get through them all. Um, I've got most of my slings with me. So if there's a particular sling you want to see or a particular question about one, just pop it in the comments and I will do my best to get through them all. Um, so baby wearing slings, carriers, whatever you want to call them, have loads of benefits um, for you and for the baby. For me personally, one of the biggest benefits is convenience. So as we all know, most babies don't want to be put down um, for a good portion of the day. So if you do need to get on with things, if you've got other children, if you've got work, if you've got housework, cooking dinner, anything at all that you need to get on with, you can pop your baby in the sling and, and get on, really. Um, some people see them as something that they use once a week to take the dog for a walk, um, and some people use them 18 hours a day. It it's really varies on what you want to do with it as to what it can do, but there's no limit to how long you can keep a baby in a sling. Obviously, they need to come out for changing and bits and pieces, but there's, there's no problem with keeping them down there. Um, there's lots of studies been done over the years. Most of them say that using a sling for a few hours a day reduces crying. Some of them say by up to about 50%. Um, depends on your baby, depends on you. Um, but it can be a really nice way to take the stress down for mum and baby. Um, so, or dad and baby or whoever. Um, so it can be quite a nice way to keep everybody a little bit calmer, a little bit more relaxed. Um, if you are breastfeeding, um, you can, the, the sling can help stimulate your milk production because your baby is right next to your breast all the time. It's very easy for you to hear and see and feel feeding cues. So it can help to get breastfeeding started off to a really good start. And you can, in oh, most of the slings, breastfeed safely. So you can use it as a bit of a, an aid. So if you're trying to run after a toddler at the same time or do your weekly shop or answer the door to the postman, you can use a sling to help you position the baby so that you can do other things too. So if you've got a baby that likes to feed for hours on end, you can still get on with, with bits and pieces. Um, at the moment, one of the big benefits for using a sling is that your baby is obviously close to you and away from other people. So if you're taking newborn baby for a walk and some people don't get the message about not touching babies or not coming near babies, or not breathing near babies, it's very difficult for them to actually get to your baby. So it keeps them nice and safe and it keeps them so close to you that people generally tend not to touch babies who are in a sling. So if you're worried about viruses or anything else, really, it keeps them nice and close to you. Um, Babies with reflux it can be really helpful because it keeps them nice and upright and it can keep them upright for hours and hours after feed. Some babies need to be up for a very long time. So you can feed them, you can feed them upright in the sling if you would like, and then you can keep them in that sling for however long they need to whilst you can still go about your day. Um, and some refluxy babies or colic or, or whatever you your baby has. Um, some can quite enjoy the pressure on their tummy, so it can be quite a nice way to comfort them and, and give them some security, if you like. And if they like that sort of pressure, it, it can do that for you too and give you your hands back. Um, it can reduce SIDS um, or decrease SIDS risk because your baby is so close to you. You can hear them, you can see them, you can note any tiny changes in their behavior so if you um if they are literally sat here if the top of the baby's head is here you 
you can hear if there's any breathing difficulties, you can hear if there's any changes in what they're doing. So you can respond to them really quickly. Um, you'll also regulate their body temperature um, because you can have them so nice and close and you can have a, just a tiny bit of skin out, just their cheek on your chest. If you have bare skin, we'll, we'll help them to do that. Um, so that, that can be really nice. Um, it prevents flathead syndrome in some babies. Um, if babies need to be popped down or if you need your hands free for some reason, if you have to pop them in um, onto a surface, into a container, a pram, a Moses basket, anything like that, if you use a sling instead, um, even some of the time it will stop them laying on the back of their head. So it just helps that. Um, it can be really good for exercise as well, for parents to get out and about and try and do that with minimal fuss and without baby having to be put in a pram and without all the accompaniments that come with it. So if you just wanted to pop out and go for a decent walk with your baby on you, they can go in the sling, you're carrying a bit of extra weight and everybody's happy and you don't have to spend half your time pushing a pram whilst holding a baby and a dog and all the other stuff that normally happens halfway around a walk. Um, so that can be really good. Um, for everybody and a bit of fresh air, especially at the moment, is is nice for everyone. Um, it can be really nice for dads as well to use slings. We're, I'm getting an increase in dads coming actually on their own to sling libraries and consultations because they want to be as involved as they can in looking after the baby. Um, so if you are, especially if baby's being breastfed, it can be really nice for the dad to have something that's for him. So some dads join in with the bottle feeding, some dads do baths, some dads, you know, lots of people have their own thing, but it, quite a few dads, if they can be in charge of the sling, um, it's quite nice for them to have their thing with the baby. Um, and they can put the baby in the sling and comfort it in a different way to how mum would, or um, in a different way to how someone else would. And grandparents, um, if they want to get involved too, it can be great to throw them a sling and, and a baby and they can take the weight and um, take a bit of the strain too. So it's quite a nice way for everybody to get involved as parents become comfortable with, with that happening at whatever age that might be. Um, it's also really nice for couples to use a sling sometimes. So if you, when you have a newborn baby or an older baby, it can, as we all know, be really hard to get some time together as a couple. So if you can pop baby in a sling and go for a walk, baby can be sort of almost out of, out of your mind for a second because they're, they're close to you, you can feel them, you can hear them, you don't need to be constantly peering into a pram or moving a cover or, or doing whatever. You know baby's safe, you can monitor them, but it also leaves your hands free to be holding hands with your partner um, or your toddler or whoever. And it means that you can have a little bit of quality time without one of you constantly having their hands full of baby. Um, especially if you've got maybe a, a smaller age gap between siblings, it can give you your hands back to sit and read a book with your older child or sit and give them a proper cuddle while baby's nice and safe and not started to cry because you put them down. Um, so that's probably some of the main benefits to baby wearing. Um, there are, I mean, there are lots more. Using public transport is much easier with a sling than a pushchair. I think most of us who've ever tried to get a pushchair on a bus have decided not to ever do it again. Um, but certainly with a sling, you just pop on and carry on. And getting round Tesco's or Waitrose with a trolley is much easier with a baby in a sling than it is trying to push a pushchair and all the rest of it too. Um, environmentally, they're normally much better for the environment. I mean, quite a few people go without a pushchair completely now. Um, and just use a sling so it can take up less room um, and less materials. There are, lots of them are now made from organic and, and sustainable materials too, which is nice. Um, so there's no questions coming yet, so I'm just going to carry on talking. Um, 
the types of thing you can have there are lots especially now there's more and more coming onto the market um but if i go through some of the main types of sling and then we'll i'll have a look that gets them out and do some demonstrations of how to use them so some of the most common ones are stretchy wraps um lots of you will have heard of them excuse my husband in the background um and lots of you will have tried to use them disliked them put them in a cupboard and never got them back out again probably because nobody has been able to actually show you what to do with them they can be really, really good for the first few months. Um, they're not particularly long term. They're probably not going to do you for two years, depending on how stretchy the wrap is and how often you use it. Most people sort of get to around four, five, six months with a stretchy wrap and decide that they the, the weight is too much and it's stretching too much. Um, but they are absolutely lovely for newborns and smaller children, smaller babies they really snuggle them close and they put them in a lovely squishy position for you and they're comfy for you especially having just given birth they're very soft and they mold around you and they spread the rate really nicely over your whole upper body really um so once you've got the hang of them they can be really really nice especially for the first few months um there's loads on the market some of them are really stretchy some of them are not so stretchy if you get one that's really really stretchy it can be a bit easier to tie because it's a bit more forgiving you just tie it tight and then that's done if you get one that's not so stretchy you will have to get used to how tight to tie it as to how much room you need for your baby um but that's just really a case of practicing um some of the issues people have with the stretchy wraps is if they get the hang of tying it they get a bit confused or get a bit um in a tangle getting the baby in um i will in a minute do a demo with one and show you quite a simple way to get the baby in and out once you've got the hang of doing it once or twice it's it is it's fine um one of the things to think about with a stretchy wrap is that you can put baby in and out all through the day so you can put the wrap on in the morning or whenever you get dressed when you've got a newborn um, and then you can pop baby in and out, in and out, in and out. You don't have to retie the wrap every single time. Um, and lots of people say, oh, I tried the wrap, um, but I wanted to use it to take the dog for a walk. And by the time I put the dog in the car and then got out the car at the other end, um, I then had to tie the wrap and it was windy and everything was going everywhere and it was muddy and the bits just get in the way. If you put the wrap on before you get in the car. If you're going somewhere in the car before you're going to use it, just put it on and pre-tie it. And then all you've got to do is get baby out of the car seat and put it straight in the wrap, um, which can be quite useful. Um, there is something called a close kaboo, which is a, a make, if you like, which is quite popular. You've probably seen them around. They look a bit like a stretchy wrap, but they have um, metal rings on the side that you can tighten the fabric through and you don't wrap it. You pop it over your head um, and then tighten and loose with the rings at the side. So it it works in a similar way to the stretchy wrap, but you don't have to do the wrapping. But baby does go in and out the same way. Um, so some people find that just as confusing, if you like. Um, with you can get uh, woven wraps, which are woven, they're not stretchy. Um, they take a little bit more practice, if you like. They have to, the baby has to be wrapped in, so you have to pop baby on you and then wrap the woven wrap around you. Um, they can be a really, really lovely tool. You can have one wrap that will do you from newborn to however old you want to carry your child till. Um, and once you've got the hang of how to tighten and how to um, tie knots and how to do things like that, it can be a really lovely tool to use. It does take a bit of getting used to um, and they are not always so hard wearing as some of the buckle carriers, if you like. Um, so they're not as popular, especially around here. Um, lots of people tend to favor buckles slings where we are um 
it's it's really a personal thing but any sling consultant or sling library should be able to show you how to use a basic wave and wrap and then it's kind of practice really that will help you go on from there um so you've got your stretchy wrap your kaboo and your woven wrap from there you sort of end up at i call them sort of hybrid stretchy carriers and um, these are pretty new on the market. There's not many around. Um, the one I've been using for however long it's been out, a year or two, is the Mamaruga Zen Sling, which is a, it's meant to sort of emulate a stretchy wrap, but it's buckled. So there's no wrapping and it's, you put the baby in it the same as you would put an ergonomic carrier on. So it's got three buckles on and it's fairly simple to use. But it's stretchy and very soft and can be adjusted really nicely down to newborn size up until uh, the weight limit's pretty high, but it'll probably do till about 18 months ish, depending on how you use it and what your baby does. Um, and the new one on the market is the Ergo Embrace, similar to the Mamaruga Zen Sling. Um, it's not quite as adjustable, but it has a few more features and you can use it in um, as an outward facing carrier if you want to, although that's maybe um, something we will talk about later. Um, but those are the two that I have in my library and that I use. Um, the Ergo Embrace is obviously very widely available because John Lewis and all the other baby places will sell it. Um, the Mamaruga Zen Sling is available really direct from Mamaruga or through people like me who retail for them. So lots of people who run a sling library will also be retailers for the smaller, less known slings. Um, so you can normally get them through places. Um, but they are worth having a look at. If you can get to a sling library before you buy a sling, please do, because there are lots of different ones on the market and they will what you think you want won't necessarily be what you end up liking. So it really is worth going if you can. Um, so they're the sort of in between stretchy wrappy buckle bits. And then you, I suppose, move to what I tend to call full buckles, um, which are what most of you will have seen and recognize a carrier to be. Um, there are two distinct groups, I suppose. There's what generally get called high street narrow based carriers and ergonomic carriers. Um, lots of the earlier baby Bjorn, uh, mother care boots, carriers like that, that have a, a smaller narrower base to them where the baby sits are what they would call a narrow based carrier. Um, and any other carrier that puts the baby in what they call the M position. So the knees are up high than the bottom and they almost look like you're sort of wrapping their legs around you at the front, um, would be referred to loosely as an ergonomic carrier because of the position of the baby. Um, there are lots of both on the market. There's more and more and more coming out all the time. Um, the full buckles used to be from birth with an insert only. Most of the new buckles coming onto the market now, you don't need an insert for. So any of you who've got um, an original Ergo with the big sort of duvet <laughs> insert, um, those have almost been sort of taken over by the newer slings on the market. Um, Baby Bjorn have bought out some newer ones which are wider based. So there's a lot of... <sighs> are around baby beyond slings because lots of them are narrow based but lots of the newer ones are not so it's worth looking um into that before you worry about oh dear i'm using a baby beyond and it's narrow based it might well not be the newer ones aren't um i'll show you some slings in a minute and show you what what i mean um so the full buckles the ones you'll have heard of are probably the ergo baby ones um mainly because John Lewis sell them and because they've been around for a long time. There are lots around. Lots of people have um, the Ergo 360 around here. It was really popular a few years ago 
and that seems to have stuck. Um, people still come in to the Sim Library with it as being recommended it by friends, so it's it's pretty popular. Um, Ergo Baby have now bought out the Adapt, which does not forward face, but it does inwards face, back carry and hip carry very nicely. And they've also, I think their most recent one, apart from the Embrace, is the Ergo Baby Omni 360, just to confuse everybody, um, which generally comes to the top of all the best sling poles because it does a lot. Um, it's a good carrier. Um, it, it is quite geared up for forward facing. So if you're looking to buy a sling, don't automatically presume that because it's the most expensive and because it's on the Guardian's number one carrier list that it's better than any of the others. It, 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 there's nothing wrong with it at all, but there are other carriers that will do exactly the same job well. Um, and you may find from looking into it that you aren't as fussed on forward facing as you thought you might be. So it's worth having a little look at that before you pay more for a carrier that forward faces, if that makes any sense. Um, so before that comes up, <laughs> forward facing, it generally comes up an awful lot in consultations and in the library. Um, lots of people want to do it. And some people come in saying, I want to forward face, great. And some come in saying, oh, I've been told I shouldn't forward face. It, there is nothing wrong with forward facing a baby in a sling. Um, what you should be aware of is the guidelines for it. And then once you know that, you can make your decisions on whether you want to do it. So. The, the issues around forward facing are if it's done for a long period of time. So most manufacturers say 20 or 30 minutes really at the most for forward facing um, for various reasons. One is that babies can get overstimulated when they're forward facing. It's that they haven't learned to filter things out and they can't necessarily blink depending on what age you're, you're forward facing them. Um, so it's quite it can be a lot for them to take in, especially if you're somewhere busy and especially if your baby is prone to overstimulation. Um, they can't see the wearer's face, so they don't take cues about social situations or anything else from the, the parent or whoever's using the sling because they can't see them. So again, that can be a little bit scary for them if they can't just look up at mum or dad or whoever is holding them and go, oh, they're fine, I'm fine, everything's fine. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Babies should never sleep in a forwards facing carrier. Every single manufacturer will say no sleeping. So that is something that shouldn't be done it, because when babies sleep, the head goes down and their chin can go on their chest and you can and then you can cause breathing issues so if you have a forward facing carrier and if you use it please don't let your baby sleep forward facing turn them around so they're facing into you for when they sleep um the thing about lots of questions i get about um forward facing in a narrow base carrier and if that's okay and if is it going to cause hip dysplasia so the answer is no you can't cause hip dysplasia by using a narrow based forward facing carrier. However, if your baby already has hip dysplasia or issues with that, there is a chance you could make it worse by forward facing in a narrow based carrier. You will not give a baby with healthy hips hip dysplasia by using a narrow based carrier. Um, there are lots of forward facing slings on the market. Some of them do it really well. Some of them still put the baby in the M shape or um, have their spine supported and, and nicely curved, which is is really important. Um, some of the narrow carriers don't. They have the legs just dangling straight down, mm -hmm. which does make the spine slightly straighter and put a bit more pressure on, on the hips. Um, so you just have to make a decision on what you're happy to do and, and what works for you. There is a really good article um, by Dr. Rosie Knowles um, on the Sheffield Sling Surgery called, I think it's called something like the Fuss of Forward Facing. So if you Google Sheffield Sling Surgery, the Fuss about Forward Facing, they've done a really good article that just explains everything. Um, so if you're thinking you want to forward face, have a little read of it 
and then it will give you all the tools you need to make the decisions on how long or when or or how you do it. Um, so I'm just going to go through a few of the questions on the side here. Um, so uh, Yvonne, you're, I've answered that. That's good. Um, Sam, you bought an Ergo Baby Omni. Should you be looking at other slings too? Um, not if you don't want to. No. Um, I don't know how old your baby is. Um, the Omni can be used from birth. Uh, it can take a bit of jiggling to get the fit right, as with lots of them. But um, if you're happy with it and if you like it and it's comfortable, then absolutely no reason for you to be looking at different slings. If you want to comment again, let me know how old your baby is or if there's a particular reason you think you should be looking at different ones, let me know and I'll, I'll go through that with you. Um, and then I think that's been covered. OK, so what I'll do is do a few demos of how to use the different types of sling. Um, I will do a stretchy wrap. Um, I'll do a mamaruga and I'll do a, a full buckles and see how we get on. Um, just ping any questions through. Just comment. I think you just comment at the bottom. Um, and I will answer them as I go. Or if there's a particular sling you want me to demo, please just let me know. Sam, if I have the Omni with me, if you want anything particularly looked at with that, let me know and I'll, I'll get that one out too. Um, so I'm just going to check you can still see me. Stand there. You'll have to excuse me. I am 36 weeks pregnant with twins, so the slings don't sit particularly well on me. But I'm hoping you'll be able to get the general idea. If I move that down and stand there, if you can't see me or can't hear me, do let me know. So I'm going to do a stretchy wrap first. Um, this is a boba wrap. It doesn't really matter which one you have, the idea is still the same. This one is super, super stretchy. Um, it stretches two way. Normally stretchy wraps are either one way or two way. This is a two way. Every single one will have a middle marker somewhere. So on this one, it's the green label in the middle. That just tells you very roughly, what well, doesn't tell you, it tells you exactly where the middle is. So if you find that, it doesn't matter if you're a few inches either way, but it just gives you an idea of where to start. So there's the tag. What you want to do is flatten it out a little bit and then just pop it over your chest. And then I'm going to try and keep this hand showing you. As you turn around, if you can keep hold of the top piece of the fabric, and then just bring it up over your shoulders. You can make it flat as you go. That's quite helpful. If it gets squished up, it doesn't really matter. Um, it depends what's comfortable for you. So as you've got it over your shoulders, you should end up with two tails, two bits like that. What you're going to do now, these two bits in underneath that bit and drop them down. And then you're going to check to see how much room you've got in there for a baby. If these are really loose and flopping around the place, you'll want to tighten them up. Don't just pull them down because all you'll do is stretch the fabric. Reach up from behind your shoulders and you can see there comes the loose fabric and adjust it down there. Once you're about there, cross them over. You can keep them as flat and as neat as you like, and depending on how much your baby is screaming. And then you're gonna take them behind your back, again, as neatly or as quickly as you'd like. And you're gonna turn around, and then you're gonna tie it normally about here. As you can see, it's not an option for me. So I'm gonna tie mine under my bump. So the nice thing about stretchy wraps is you can tie them anywhere. So if you've got a ginormous bump, you can tie them underneath. If you've had a section, you can tie them higher. If you've got a sore tummy for whatever reason, you can just move them. And what you can do is flatten these bits out around your body like that, just to give you a bit of a support. So obviously baby is gonna sit a little bit high in this because I've got no room, but you'll just have to bear with me a little bit. So this is, my demo doll, it is not a real baby. If I drop him, he's fine. Don't panic. So easiest thing to do is find which one of these two goes underneath the other. So you can see that this is the top one here, go that side, and this one 
is underneath. So whichever one goes underneath, which is this one for me, pop your baby high on your other shoulder as if you're burping them or rocking them. And then you're going to pop your hand flat under there and pull the sling. Don't try and shove the baby in. So pull the strap out and then you're going to post baby through just the one leg. Arm goes under two and while your hand is still underneath the stretchy wrap, pull that over the back and all over to the other knee. So your baby should be supported from one knee all the way over to the other knee with the baby. Okay, then you can, that's pretty well supported. Put one hand on the back. You're going to do exactly the same. This is where it gets a bit confusing for people because it's the second piece. Slide your hand in nice and high up so you're not confused about which piece you've got and take that under and over and then spread it again all over the baby's back. It's going to move that forward a little bit so you can see. And then you can pull these down on your shoulders if you like and you should end up with two passes over a baby like that. Now, obviously that's a little bit high. Legs are nicely supported, feet should come out at the bottom. What you're going to do then is take your other bit of sling, which for me has got caught up there. So there it is, that's the bit that we popped out the way. You're gonna take that up and over the legs, pop it right in the baby's knee, and then pull it up over the back. So you should be able to see there that that's where it's come up. If I fold that over, you'll be able to see the top of that look as to where that goes. Then you end up with something that looks like that. You can see baby's a little bit squished. So if you move them slightly, you can pop this, whichever side they're on, pop their head underneath. You can then turn this one out over itself, hook it over your shoulder again, and then you've got a nice clear bit of airway for the baby there. And then you can fiddle with their legs if you want, or you can sit them, and that's pretty secure now. If, like some babies, your baby refuses to put their head anywhere but straight on, you can, if you grab a muslin or anything, roll it up, pop it underneath the back of the baby's head, and then it gives them a little pillow there for them to flop back on if they need to. So that's how you get them in. Sorry, that one looks a bit wonky. Then to get them out, literally pull that down and out the way, open that one up, open that one up, and just lift baby out. So then baby can be dealt with however you need, and you can then either keep this on or take it off. I'm going to take it off because we'll look at what's in now. But that's the basics with a stretchy wrap. Um, you can watch that back a few times. I think this is going to go onto YouTube. So if you're struggling with your stretchy, maybe have a look at that. Um, so I will show you a close kaboo next, which is similar. Um, So these work in a similar way, but you don't wrap them. So they tend to look a bit like that. There's different patterns and different bits and pieces, but that's what roughly you're looking at. So to put this on, you can see the rings there. You want this piece here to end up between your shoulder blades at the back. So you're going to hold it a bit like that. Put one arm through there, one arm through there. And then you're going to put it over your head and you're going to end up with something that looks a little bit like our stretchy wrap did after we tied it. This one's a little bit twisted. There we go. And then you can tighten it by pulling forwards. And if you need to loosen it, just have a fiddle with those rings and pull it through. OK, so check there's enough room for your baby. It's a little bit easier with these just to make it slightly bigger and then tighten it up to so make it as big as you need to. And then your baby's gonna go in exactly the same way. So whichever one's underneath, which is this one, up on the opposite shoulder, 
legs are going to go through, they're going to sit on that bit, and you're going to spread that out. If you put their arms under, it is much easier than trying to do it with their arms out. And you're going to go to the side, that bit out, over the baby's back. So there you can see you end up with a similar thing to what you ended up with the stretchy wrap. You've then got this third piece, which gets tied along the outer outside. But all you do literally is tuck that nicely to their bottom and support them. And you're going to pass it around your back, tie a double knot in the back. And then you're done. And again, to take them out, that comes off. That opens there, that opens there. Baby comes out. And then you can either keep this on or take it off, depending on what you fancy. So that's that one. I'm not going to demo a woven wrap um, because I don't want to use up too much time and it's quite hard to show you at the moment, especially with this in the way. Um, if anyone is particularly interested in woven wraps, you can send me a message after this and I will send you some bits through for that. What I'll do is show you the Mamaruga Zen Sling next. Um, I'm just going to prop this up a little bit because I don't know if you can see the angle particularly well. That's a bit better. So this is one of them. That's the inside of it. That's the outside. So these are lovely and squashy, but they do take a little bit of working out where they go. So if you have it hanging down like that, this label here wants to go to your tummy. And in order to do that, fold it like that. I'm just going to put this over my bump, otherwise it'll look ridiculous. You've got clips. Pull it out, make it bigger. Do those up behind your back and then adjust it to wherever it's comfy. And then you'll end up with this in theory. So you can see that's flopped over the front. The way to adjust this is to shove it together, um, basically, and you want to push it in. Um, Mamaruga suggests you lay this on the floor first and lay your baby on to get how big you need this. You can do that, or you can do it by sight if you're a bit more experienced and you, and you know roughly how big you need it. You can adjust it once they're in. So if it's a newborn, you just want to squish it up together. And then you stop, pick baby up. And it's really important when you do this, that you pick baby up onto you and you want to get them in a seated position before you try and bring the back of the sling up. So lots of people try and pick baby up and they sort of pull this up and then try and sit the baby. Don't do it, just let it dangle. Sit the baby with legs either side, so legs should be out. Nice wide position here, needs to be higher than the bottom. And take a breath. So you don't need to rush into it. Baby sat nicely on there and quite well supported. So then with one hand, one on the back, one goes under the sling. Just scoop that up and pop it up. And then you're going to take one of these, doesn't matter which one, pop it over your shoulder. And that is going to clip around here and plug in there. You can then adjust that forwards or backwards, depending on what you need. So don't worry too much about the fit at the moment. I'm just going to pull those in because I should have done that before. And then you're going to take the other one. That's going to go to the other side. When you put these on, you really, you can sit just dangling down my back there. You really want to take it down and round. You don't want to be pulling it round here and then trying to do it, because that will then go up to your shoulders. So if you need to lengthen it, just pull the clip out like that, and you're going to come round here and plug that in there. So again, baby is sat a few inches higher than I'd like, because it's got nowhere else to go. And then what you can do is pop that in, and then you have adjusters here on the on the Zen sling, which again, if you're doing this on your own, I'd suggest following the instructions from the Mamaruga, um, from the PDF, and 
making sure that those are adjusted before you put the baby in. The reason I didn't is because this isn't a real baby. And also because my son was obviously playing with it before I got hold of it. And then what you can do is pull, you can't see it very well, I don't think. There's a thing there, you can pull that down. You can see baby's head starting to come out. And you want to do that with both sides. That would be done before, obviously baby is laying quite into me and it's quite high up. That's because of this ginormous bump. Um, it should sort of be sat like that, well, not like that, but I can't do a lot about that. Really. What you can then do with the Zen sling is pull those down over one shoulder and the other shoulder, and then you're done. So it, it feels like a stretchy wrap. These are all stretchy fabrics, um, but you can just buckle. So it's a little bit easier. To take it off, just undo that one, undo that one, feel those straps down, take baby out, and then take the sling off as and when you're ready. Um, these can be used from birth, I think it's from about seven pounds. Um, you'd have to check the label. Um, lots of sling consultants will be able to if you have a baby under seven pounds, we'll be able to find you a sling that fits your baby safely. Um, so if you do have a smaller baby and you want some help, if you can find a sling consultant, some of them are still doing online um, consultations. Um, some are not, hopefully sling libraries will be back up and running soon, as, as soon as we can. Um, so that's that one. The Ergo Embrace works in a similar way. What time have we got? I won't show the embrace because it's very similar to how that works. If anyone particularly wants me to do a video for the embrace, just give me a shout and I'll, I'll do that for you. So I should pop that one back. So after that, you kind of move on to what the majority of you will have seen as a carrier, a sling, what you probably would recognize as what we use most of the time. Um, so I will show you a Boba X which is a really, really nice adjustable sling straight from birth to probably about four years old. It has toddler extenders on it, so it um, it really does last for a very long time. I've had my very large four-year-old in it when he was four um, with no problems at all. So it, it lasts a really long time. If you're looking for a sling that's going to do you from birth right the way through, it's definitely worth a look. Um, they're easy to get hold of, um, but you won't find them anywhere apart from through Sling Consultants or through Boba Direct. Um, if anyone would like more information on, on any of the slings, just let me know and I'll, I'll send you the, the details through um, and you can have a look at the manufacturers. So, sorry, can't breathe through all, I've got no lung space. This one is the Boba Rex. It comes in quite a few different patterns. But that is roughly what it looks like. So lots of the new carriers will adjust for a newborn or for bigger babies by Velcro or something at the base of this panel. This one is Velcro. So if you have a tiny weenie newborn, you undo the Velcro and make it as small as it will go. And then to adjust for a baby, you've got these ones up here. You just pull these down. There you go, it's a bit stiff, it's a new one, um, to make that really small. And what this does is makes this panel smaller than it would be otherwise. Um, so if you've got Tilly Baby, you can pull that right in. And then this is your hood. I would suggest folding that up and out the way to start with because otherwise it just gets in the way. It's very helpful for sun or rain or wind or if you're eating and you crumbs on your baby you can get out if you need to it also makes quite a nice head support in here because this doesn't have um a fixed head support like you might see on the ergo babies or some of the other slings but it does have a nice comfy pillow so this goes on basically the same way as the mummery to start with you can wear the straps crossed or not these straps are curved, so they are they do lend themselves towards being worn in a rucksack style, if you like. Um, 
you can cross them, um, especially people who are quite petite, who've got narrow shoulders, they might prefer to cross them. Um, but I will show you with them just in the rucksack style. So you want it set up a bit like that. What you're going to do then is pop it on your waist, if you have one. Um, lots of people, especially men, tend to try and put it on their hip. For guys, it's going to be too low on their hips. Um, so they will need to put it sort of here-ish. Imagine if I had a waist. Um, if you put it on your, it be too low and it's going to pull your shoulders and it's just going to hurt your back. So have it about there. And just buckle it at the back like that. And adjust. Some of them only adjust one way, some adjust both. And then again, your hands off to get your baby. Baby comes up and sits, as we said last time, right into the bottom of the carrier. That makes sure that they are sat in the bottom. And when you pull the back of the carrier up, they've got a nice deep seat and they're not sort of sat like this and then you lose half the camera so you want them sat nice and comfortably on there one hand on baby one hand under the carrier to scoop it up and you're just going to pop your arm in almost as if you are actually wearing a rucksack and pop your other arm in like that so at this point baby is completely secure because the straps are here what you now need to do is do up the safety strap at the back what I should have done before I put it on was move it down a bit. So this one's on a rail. See, it's here at the moment. You do not want that done up on your neck. You roughly want it where your bra strap is. I've got limited movement at the moment, so I'm just going to do mine up a little bit higher, like that. Once you've done that, baby's completely secure. You can then adjust your straps either by pulling this one backwards if you like or by pulling this one I've left too high up there forwards so I need to excuse my there we go so you can pull that down like that and that will adjust those straps for you whichever way you find most comfortable so there we go that's a little bit easier now and now you can see baby is completely secure again it's leaning forward a little bit we kind of want it sat like that but because of my bump, it's laying on me. That doesn't really matter. Um, it just means it looks a little bit strange for you to look at. So with this carrier, it's soft. You can see it just squishes in around and it'll adjust out. You've got a pocket with bits and pieces under there and some other bits on the top. But that's generally how it works. You have a hood, which we talked about earlier. Most carriers now come with a hood and that will pop onto straps, the little poppers on the shoulders that you can see just there. The hood is for head support if they fall asleep um, or if they don't, if they're happy to have their head covered, you can see there's still a lot of air flowing through there and they're lovely and close to you there. Um, or you can use it for rain, wind, sun, any of the above, whatever you want to do with it. So that's your standard buckle carrier fitting if you like that's roughly how they all work you pop their arms up there they can have their hands pretty much wherever they want to start with um take baby out you're going to undo undo your safety straps some people struggle to reach these your arms do stretch if you struggle that's where the cross straps come in handy so i'll show you um a carry with straps across in a minute if, if that would be easier so then you just take your arms out Make sure you keep baby hand on baby all the time. Let the sling flop down. Lift baby up. And then you're done. And then you can unbuckle this or, or not. So that, ugh, these have triple buckles on some of them. So they're a bit difficult to undo. So that's that one. Um, well, we've got 10 minutes left. What I will show you is... A, I will do a Tula Explore um, because it is one of the main competitors to the Ergo Omni. So lots of people look for an Omni, buy an Omni because they've heard of them, they've seen them, John Lewis sell them. So Tula are another very big carrier company and they make what's called an Explore, which does the four positions. It does facing out, facing in, 
Um, she does pretty much, I don't think it does hip carrying, but it does back carrying. Most of the ones I've shown you will do back carrying. So I will show you that quickly. <laughs> so I've tried to pick patterns that will stick out so you can actually see them. So don't be put off by the bright colour there. So this is the Studio Explore. Again, it's going to look similar to the Omni, those of you who've got it. This one adjusts at the bottom with poppers instead of Velcro, but it's still basically the same thing. So as your baby grows, you just pull it out onto the next popper. Um, these bits at the front, these buttons here are for if you're forward facing or inwards facing. So this one is set up for forward facing, so I'll quickly show you how to do that. If you can see the two sets there, there's the top buttons and there's the bottom buttons. If you were going to be inwards facing your baby, you would take these bits off here and do them up onto the top button. Apart from that, that's, that's all the changes you make. So exactly the same as the other one. You're going to buckle it around your waist as far as you can. Like that, the Tudors um, don't have lumbar support. Lots of people ask for lumbar support, but actually if your carrier fits correctly, you don't need it. Um, it does feel more snug sometimes, or if you're quite petite, it can feel annoying. It's worth trying them on um, before you commit to spending the money on them. So when that's tight and you're happy, baby comes up. Now, if you're outwards facing, you're going to sit them outwards with the legs apart if you can. This bit's going to come up. Now, this baby will be too small for outwards facing, so bear with me because it will get covered by the sling. Um, but just to give you an idea, I will fold that down. So then all you're going to do, put those over your shoulder. If you need to make it bigger, you can do that as it, go up, it goes up, like that. And then you're going to reach behind and do that top piece of strap and tighten it if you need. If you need to tighten your straps, then you just pull those forward. So this baby is not big enough for forward facing. You can see that the sling is in its throat, which is not ideal. You want the baby to be sat proud of the sling and have good head control. That happen. So that's just the idea. So those of you looking for an alternative to the Ergo Omni, this is one. So undo that, take that down, baby comes out. Now, if you wanted to turn baby around to sleep, you can hold baby and you can change those buttons and then just pop baby back in. So that's quite helpful. So the last thing I will do is just show you one more normal buckled carrier. Um, we haven't looked at the logo yet, and lots of you know them, so I will just show you earlier uh, quickly. So I'm going to use a green one so you can see it on me. This is an Ergo Baby Adapt. It adjusts in the middle. So you can pin that in for however big your baby is. I'm going to rush through this because we haven't got much time left and there's a few questions. So if your baby is tiny, it goes on the small bit. Now I will do this up in a cross strap for those of you who want the alternative to the rucksack who can't reach that bit behind. If you can't reach the safety strap at the back and you don't like cross straps, there's other ways to do it. Um, send me a message and I will show you. So this, the Adapt has the lumbar support there. So you have to spend a second or two getting that because you want it to end up in the middle of your one. So once you've done it up, You then want to adjust these either side to make sure that's minimal. This is probably a little bit higher in my back than I would like it, but obviously that's not anything I can do something about at the moment. So get that comfy. Baby sits in. Again, this bit comes up. And now if you're going to cross the straps, just put whichever one over, reach behind your back, bring it round to the side. And it's going to do up through that bit of elastic there and like that. Done. 
And again, next one goes over. And it's going to do exactly the same thing through the elastic and done. So then you have no need to reach back and do the safety strap, which some people will be thankful. And then you can adjust that by pulling those in and out. So baby's nice and secure. You can see there this bit is not sat right in the carrier, in which case you can pull that up, give them a jiggle and you'll see them sit down a bit. The ergos have the lifty up head support. So you can see you've got two buttons, bottom and top. You can have that head support buttoned at the bottom or at the top if you need to. You've also got a hood which lives in there and comes out. So the other thing I will run through quickly is the TICS baby wearing guidelines. If you are using a sling or thinking you're going to use a sling, please do have a look at them. If you just Google baby wearing TICS, it'll show you. Um, but what they mainly say is your sling should be nice and tight. So if you go forward with your baby, your baby should come with you. They're, they shouldn't move away from your body. If they do that, just tighten those bits up a little bit if you need to. Um, they should be in view at all times. Obviously, when they're this close to you, they are. They should be close enough to kiss. Not this close, because I'm going to bang my chin on this head, but that's obviously can't be helped at the moment. Uh, their back should be nicely supported. Um, and have a nice little curve like that to the spine. Um, uh, they should have their chin off their chest. So at the moment, you can't see because the angle of the camera, but baby is supported nicely in his back, which is keeping him nice and straight and means he's not slumping down in the carrier. So you don't want babies to start sinking into carriers. You want them to be nice and tight and supported for everybody, and nice and comfy. Um, so do look those up. Let me just take this one off and then I can answer a few questions. Um, and if you have any questions about them, just ping me an email or contact me through here. So baby comes out and there you go. So that was a really quick whiz through most of the standard types of sling. I've got probably another hundred in my boxes over here. They are by no means the best or um, better than any others it really depends on personal preference so if you can get to a sling library when this is all over or if you can at least speak to somebody and get your options um, so you know what things might suit you for you to have a look at then it, it can save you a lot of money and a lot of hassle um, so let's just have a look um so lisa you've got the chico baby sling i'm not familiar with that one if it says it can be used from birth just check the weight limit sometimes they say birth but they say seven and a half pounds is birth so just have a check of it um and make sure that baby is, is up to the weight for it but yeah there's no reason it shouldn't be able to be used from birth um Victoria, looking at ring slings, um, tricks, <laughs> practice, um, I'm not entirely sure what, what you didn't get on with, um, if you want to pop me a message onto my Slingsby Facebook page, I will try and, I, I'll have a chat with you about that, ring slings I haven't got out because we just haven't got the time, um, but they're certainly absolutely fine to use with a newborn. Um, sometimes it's just a case of making sure you tighten the bits that need to be tightened, not necessarily all of it, but pop me a message and, and we can have a chat about that. Um, Sam, so Sam, I didn't see your message. Um, before I did the demos, so apologies, but the demo with the Adapt will see you pretty well for the Omni. It's it's the same base, the only difference is the Omni forward faces as well, but you've got the Velcro and the rest of it. Um, hopefully, if you've got a couple of months to go, hopefully this pandemic will be under control a little bit in the Sling Library, we're back up and running, you can always bring your baby, I will be doing it 
I will have newborn twins with me, so I'm not sure that how it'll work, but you can always bring Sling and Baby to the library and we'll, we'll see if we can help with it. Um, Emma, if it's hot, um, it's, it's not a very helpful answer, but, but common sense really, if you've got um, a baby in a sling and it's very hot outside, I would pop them in maybe a vest and a nappy um, and make sure they've got some access to some of your skin and some of their skin so you can help regulate their temperature a little bit. Um, what you don't want is to layer them up um, too much, obviously, because they can get hot. If you treat the sling like a layer of clothing, um, if you're wrapping, you've got a stretchy wrap, you might want to treat it as two layers because the passes go over. So just think what you dress them in normally. Um, and maybe you might want to think about draping a muslin over their legs if they've got bare legs, if they're going to be in the sun and you haven't got anything else to shade them with. Parasols or umbrellas might not be hugely fashionable, but if you've got baby in a sling um, and it's super hot, you can always pop a, a shade up for them. Um, Lisa, I have run out of time for demonstrations for feeding babies. If you want to, again, send me a message um i will try and do you a video of feeding a baby in a stretcher you definitely can there are a few ways of doing it if you pop me a message i will um either send you a link or do a video myself it's quite hard for me to get it in there at the moment but it's completely possible um and yeah pop me a message and i'll, I'll try and help with that um harry oh good that's helpful um, Kia, I can, can I put baby on my back? Yes, I can do you a quick one of that. Caveat to it, um, the only demo dolls I have are too small for back carrying, so it doesn't work so well, and I love to go and wake one of my children up and show you, but I will do you a quick demo before I finish of, um, putting a baby on your back with a, I presume you mean a buckled carrier. I'm going to hope you do. Um, so I will do that quickly. Any more questions, ping them up in the next sort of minute or so. If not, please do message me on the Facebook page. It's, I think it's just called Slingsby. My name's Bryony, but it's only me. So you won't go through it to anyone else. Um, and I will try and answer them over the next few days if I can. So Kinga, for the back carry, um, I don't know what sling you have, I will just grab a DAX that we had earlier. So what you really want to do is just put it on as if, sorry, let me mix that up, as if you were going to put it on as a front carry. Sorry, I'm talking for too long and I've lost it now. So you would ideally have it set up in the rucksack strap. So if your sling does cross strap, it's not so comfy to have straps crossed for a back carry because they end up giving you about six different boobs because they cut in. You can do it if you want to, but it's not always the most comfortable thing. Um, so it just takes a second to set the sling up. Just excuse me. Uh, there we go. So let me just winch these all in. So for back carrying, it's really good idea to practice over a sofa or a bed or something first. It can be super, super useful to back carry. So if you can get the hang of it, especially early on, you can back carry. It varies from baby to baby, but around six months-ish. Some of them are earlier, some of them a bit later. When they can sit up unaided is, is normally a good time to try. So what you're gonna do is just put your sling on exactly as you would if you were gonna front carry. Bigger baby, but also slightly heavier. So bear with me if it goes a bit wonky because I haven't got quite the range of movement. So you're going to sit them in exactly as you would. And you're going to bring the sling up again as you would. The difference is now. Let me just clip that one in there. You're going to take both your straps. So this one and this one. Lean the baby forward, 
and take hold of both of these straps with one hand. So baby's quite secure, they're not going anywhere. And then make sure this waistband isn't too tight. You want it to be able to support baby so it doesn't slip down, but you want it to be able to move. So you might want to loosen it to where you normally have it. And then whilst you hold that, sorry, I'm gonna make sure you can see, you can scoot the baby whichever way around to your hip. And you're gonna take this hand and put it through that first one. You can lean a little bit if you need and then do them a little jig. Reach back with that one and then you're going to put this arm through that strap. Hold on to the two and give them a final little jiggle around. And then you've got your chest strap, and your safety strap that you're going to do up at the front. And then you are free to adjust these as you need. Now you'll have to, excuse me, because that's gone a bit wonky. And then baby is sat on your back and you're all in. Obviously this would not be up here. It would be further low down and those would be sat properly if I didn't have a journal was bump in the way. So to take them out, I would always sit down, undo it, undo the whole sling and let baby come out of the sling. I will really quickly show you another way to do it because that can be a bit daunting for some people. It's the quickest way I know to do it. Um, it also takes a little bit of practice. So if you don't like the idea of doing it that way, again, baby goes on as you would normally. Sit them in, and then you're gonna bring the carrier up, pop it on, and you're gonna do your safety strap up at the back. If you need to bring it up, you just pull it up on the rails, because you will have it lower when you back carry, otherwise it'll be up in your throat. So you can't see what I'm doing. So you do that there, and then you lengthen this strap. And what you're going to do is put one arm out over the top, like this, and this arm under the bottom. So you've still got your strap, baby's still secure. And then you are going to reach back, take hold of your strap there, and again, scoot the baby round under your arm like this. Now the difference is this time, the sling is always done up. When you get to here, you can pop your arm back under there, back over there, and then just tighten up your safety strap. And then, there you go, and secure. So, excuse the wonky straps. There we go. So that's it. So those are your two options. There are a few more options for back carrying. You can swing them over your head like a superhero. Um, it does work. <laughs> I prefer to do it like that. Um, it's just a little bit easier, really. Um, so I hope that helps a bit. If it hasn't helped, if it wasn't clear, again, ping me a message and I will try and do that. Um, so I think that's everybody's question oh sandra um breastfeed in the sling where will the video be posted um pop me a message and i will if i can't find a decent one to show you i will do one for you um i may signpost you to someone else at the moment because i probably can't get the sling low enough to show you how to breastfeed depending on the age of the baby and the sling you're using um, I can show you super quick with the buckles how to feed. I think I'm only meant to be here for now, sorry. Probably on board a bit. So we'll stick with the adapt, we'll put that back on. If you have a baby who is in a buckled sling who's sitting up, um, one of the easiest ways to feed, pick the baby up, put him back in the sling, see everyone knows how to use an adapt now. Look. Arms go through, do up your safety straps Oop. as you would normally. So, if this is you, this is your baby, what you can do is just open your waistband a little bit, 
make that a bit lower and undo these side buckles one sorry don't undo them just lengthen them two your baby will then sit lower down can you see baby's head is there you can then do whatever you need to with your top to allow baby to feed straight on so that's a really really simple really quick way of feeding in a buckled carrier um if you want to feed in a stretchy wrap give me a shout and i will either find you a video or i will do one for you um but yes that's a buckled one so i think that is everybody's questions answered um if you have any questions i mean i may go into labor in the next week or so so i'm if i don't get back to you i apologize um but do pop me a message on my facebook page or through um my email is briny at slingsby.co.uk and i will try and send any resources out or answer any questions you've got um uh this my sling library is in wallingford there is another sling library in oxford and there is another one in wantage that i know of so there are quite a few around um so if you are still looking for help if i can't help i will try and post you onto somebody who is still running um i'm not doing consultations at the moment um, but some of them may well be doing online consultations. If they're not, I will find somebody who is for you. So please, any questions, um, give me an email or a message and good luck. And I'm sure I will see some of you at Sling Library at some point. Thanks a lot. Bye.